Stefan Schlie is a trials genius. He's also the founder of Uphill Flow. And uh, we're here in Brixen Testival, uh, and we're taking a quick look at uh, his Mondraga Croft Crafty RR, because I'm really interested how a guy who can climb some seriously tough hills has got his bike set up. Now, Stefan's uh, Mondraga Crafty RR is a size small, but it's not actually a small bike. It's got a reach of 450 millimeters. The chainstay, 445. The head angle, 65.5. Seat to angle, uh, 76. And did I mention the chainstay, 445? I did. Hey, the travel on this bike, we're looking at 150 mil on the back, 160 mil up front, 29 inch wheels. But what I wanna know is there's some, I can see some bits on this bike, which he's obviously thought about in detail. Stefan, I'm gonna ask you maybe, what are your three most important parts of your bike? Well, the most important part, of course, is the Modo with all his inc incredible Modi that makes it possible to have this incredible uphill flow in so many trails and uphills. Um, so this is uh, the unbeaten uh, number one and... Can I, can I, you actually were, just so people know, you were actually a key part of the development process of the Bosch Formula CX motor, weren't you? Well, um, the motor of course is an engineer thing uh, only, but I think I have a part into developing the motor characteristic uh, about the application. How is the feeling that the bike is sticking on the feet uh, means uh, about the EMTB mode and the Tour Plus mode and these things that we have the supernatural riding feeling that we can really use on the mountain, in the mountain, that we have a value and that we have a natural feeling. Okay. What was interesting, uh, Stefan mentioned yesterday that now Stefan's obviously a trials legend and when you're on a, on a bicycle trials bike, you accelerate to get lift over a step and it's instant, isn't it? So you guys kind of designed the extended boost to kind of try and replicate that feeling, didn't you? Yeah, it's, it's exactly this because we're, what, what I am missing as a trials rider, I'm used to a six or seven kilo uh, trials bike and when I make a little move on the pedal, I can feel it, it's agile and I do something and something happens. But with a 25 kilo uh, um, e-mountain bike, nothing happens. So the extended boost is something that gives me the lightweight feeling like flying over the obstacle and uh, the composition of um, how to do that, that it really comes when you want it, that it does not come too much, that it comes with a little pedal stroke or a long pedal stroke with, a, with, with few pressure or with a lot of pressure. Um, this was something we were playing with and I think we found a really nice solution that helps us in the trails and uh, to find the uphill flow. Yeah, well, I have to say that I very much enjoy riding the Bosch mode, actually in loads of modes, even you know, the tour mode is great for range, the uh, turbo is for crazy stuff, and of course that EMTB mode which is great for when you need to switch your mind off. But going back to the question about the three most important parts of the bike, so we've got the motor, now I'm looking at the brake step and surely that could be part of it as well? Of course, with all the with all the nice parts on the bike, it's so difficult to, uh, to 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 tell you the top three. But if you're asking me about the brakes, I would say um, the brakes are super important on an e-mountain bike because normally you 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 only need the brakes to decelerate your bike. But right now you control your bike with the brakes up the hill. It means uh, with the rear brake you can control the traction. Uh, just uh, if you if you think you are going uh, up the hill in the turbo and um, and you lose the traction and you use the rear brake and if you can how to say it, you dose the the, the brake in a, in a in a fine way not in a di digital way um, you can play with your fingers with the brake um, that uh, that that you can improve your riding ability a lot and even so. Um, uh, down down the hill you have more weight you but it should be smooth with the final brake power that is enough the brake is super important and, and the brake you got on the bike i can see you've got 200 mil discs on there but they're they sorry 220 yeah oh right i can see so these are the, the magura e-bike specific brakes aren't they yeah um the 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 magura e-stop the thinking is because you are using the level of the mt5 together with a 220 uh, with a 220 disc with uh, different brake pads with sport brake pads but uh, the um, travel of the uh, columns of the um, MT of the MT5 is more so you have no noises you have a very very smooth feeling of the brake but at the end when you have the maximum pressure you have the same pressure like MT7 yeah i get i mean what do you weigh you must weigh what 60 kilos 
<laughs> Thank you very much. What do you want to drink? <laughs> I've already got one over there. <laughs> oh, to be honest, it's more like 78. <laughs> Just a few other component parts of Stefan's bike here. He's got 165 mil Miranda cranks on there in a particularly nice colour. Chromag pedals, flat pedals, of course, with Charles Rider. Uh, DT Swiss hybrid wheels on the bike. Uh, short retires, an SQ Labs uh, carbon bar, I think, on it. But um, Stefan, tell me SQ Labs, you've got SQ Labs grips on there, but also the seat. Um, how important is the seat on an e mountain bike? Ah, the seat is super important because it's a contact point and uh, most of the uphills you have to do uh, while sitting on the bikes to have the uh, pressure over the rear axle on the tire that you can have the traction to bring all the nice motor power um, to the ground. And for that you need to sit on your saddle, you need to, you need to balance with the bike, that means uh, your butt needs to make this kind of movements. Uh, you are not supposed to slip uh, to the rear side uh, in order not to, to be cramped with your arms. Um, we, have, we, have, we have a rubber application here that you, that you are really fixed into the seat. You can quickly get out the seat, sit down again, find your point, um, and uh, above all, your butt doesn't hurt. Okay, so this is really insightful, I have to say. And now let's move to tires and tire pressure. Now, obviously, it's, that's an essential part of a trials riding e bike as well. What, tell us, talk us through your, your tire setup, Stefan. Yeah. Right now, um, I'm, I'm not riding with the setup I usually have on my bike because usually I have the Schwalbe um, Eddy Current um, because it's, it's just so safe against punctures. You can uh, ride it with just super few air, tubeless. You have the comfort, you have uh, it's safe against uh, punctures and you also have the grip. Right now I'm using, I'm, 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 I'm also using Schwalbe Tires uh, Magic Mary, but the air pressure I prefer for the uphills normally is like one bar or less. <laughs> one bar, yeah. one bar, wow. Uh, which you actually cannot really use in the downhills, so you need to find a, a, good, a good compromise. But I, but I remember when I was testing all the things, all the different carcass profiles, and uh, before we had uh, the Procore system, I was doing this with 0.6 bars. <laughs> And you know it was it was it was like teeth going to the ground and and and, and just you can climb on an incredible trials way like on a motorcycle trials. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think I think I think my trials bike was I think five psi. I don't know what the bar was. Uh, it's also interesting when you look at the EWS E racing on the power stage. Uh, some riders like the likes of Nico Vulios actually lower their pressure to do the power stage and then increase the pressure when they're doing the downhill stage as well. So I think tire pressure really interesting subject. We should probably should revisit a bit. Uh, uh, more in the future. Yep. Uh, Stefan, I'm looking at your display there. Uh, obviously, Bosch just came out with the uh, new smart system, with the 750 battery and the new sort of uh, LED controller and the Kiox 300. Why have you chosen to go with the Nyon display on this bike? Uh, because I'm a data freak and I like, uh, I, I, I'm not only doing the trials move, I like to see what is doing my body, how many watts I'm pedaling, uh, I want to know where I am. Uh, I have all these functions included into the Nyon, connected to the battery, I have no stress with, with an empty battery. Uh, I, and and it is, it's, it's not really disturbing, I mean, I can understand if people like a super clean display, um, but for the for for the for most of the riding situations, even this this display does not disturb you. You have all the informations, and um, yeah. I, I think it's cool that Bosch have got like a good range of displays, good range of batteries, and also motors as well. Uh, a few other touches on Stefan's bike: got a DT Swiss uh, fork on there, a SRAM GX shifting, um, and uh, Stefan. I thought that was a really interesting chat about the set of you. Oh, I was gonna ask you, about, do you ever use lockout on your, on, your, on your suspension or do you just leave it open all the time? In the terrain, I always leave it open. I, I always leave it open because it gives me in the uphill uh, more traction actually. And in the downhill, uh, all the features that we know. The, the only uh, moment when I really close it is when I go uh, uphill over fire roads or asphalt and I need to save my battery because I don't want to get out, uh, run out of um, uh, energy. Uh, this is what I, what I really hate and then I save everything that is possible. And one final thing, guys, is that I can see a cheeky little lead coming out of the motor. <laughs> Come on, Stefan, what is going on there? No, this, this is a secret, of course. No, you, like, like, like we said at the beginning of the interview. No, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, 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 like designing the, um, 
like designing the modes, you need to have informations. And uh, the hardest part to, um, to t for the for the co-work with the engineers is uh, you need to explain what you want and you need to uh, reproduce it systematically. You need to mark uh, into some data that you measure uh, where you can imagine to improve something. And in order to have this data, you put some uh, data recording on this cable uh, to, to realize new ideas that we will see in the future, of course. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Stefan, thanks so much. That's a really insightful uh, look into the bike of Stefan Schley. Check out Stefan's videos. Very cool. Can do some insane climbs uh, on the bike. Also got a book as well, haven't you? Yeah. On, on uh, e-bike trial skills. So check it out. Stefan, thanks. Thank you very much. Boom.